Hey guys, what's up? Kelvin here. Today we're going to be starting off with the configuration portion of our Unified MPLS series. So if you haven't seen the past two videos, which were more theory oriented, I will leave a link to the entire playlist in the description below. You can go ahead and check out that entire playlist, check out all of the videos in there, and then find which videos and which parts you want to watch and go ahead and get caught up with the series here if you aren't caught up already. So today we're going to be, as I said, starting off with the configuration portion of this. So we're moving away from theory and we're getting into answering the question of how we actually implement this architecture, what features we have to involve in order to get the unified, or you might also hear it called seamless MPLS architecture working, and how we would go about designing this and configuring this. So in this video, we're going to go ahead and focus on the prerequisite configuration, the IP addressing and all of that that I've already done on topology. That way we can hit the ground running with the next video on configuring the actual components that we need to bring together to make this architecture work. So without further ado, if that sounds interesting to you, I hope to see you after this intro. See you there. So if you're caught up with the rest of the Unified MPLS series, and more specifically, you've watched the last video in this series, the previous one, where we discussed the Unified MPLS architecture and we took a, a deep look at the actual Unified MPLS theory and the theoretical operations, this diagram should be pretty familiar to you because that's the diagram that we explored in that last video. So. Again, this diagram should be pretty familiar with you if you watched that video. If not, it's a pretty simple diagram for you to find MPLS. We've got two CEs here now. For the sake of simulating multiple customers and just because I am too lazy to drag on multiple customer edges for multiple customers, uh, I have made these multi VRF CEs. So you can either look at them as simulating multiple customers or you can just say that they're two VPNs for the same customer. Either way, a very similar implication. And we have four PEs here. They're not going to all be pairing with each other, but I'll get into that in a later video in the series. We have two ASBRs here, and then we have four P routers. And for the most part, this is translated pretty well over to CML. I did change some things. Notably, instead of three XR routers, there are two because I swapped out PE4 with a XE router instead of an XR router just because I like my RAM and 20 gigs per node is a lot. And I need to keep that number down. So I have just reduced it down to ASVR2 and PE3 being iOS XR routers and the rest of them are just regular old iOS XE CSR 1000 Vs uh, for the purposes of demonstration. But for the most part, everything else is replicated pretty cleanly from this diagram over to the actual CML topology that we will be working with. Now, I've opened up a secure CRT session to all of these devices here because I want to use this video to very quickly show you the pre-configuration that I have done on these routers prior to starting off the configuration portion of this series here. So it's very minimal. Mainly what I've just done is I've configured the IP addressing and that's pretty much it. Uh, IP addressing and VRFs. So because these are multi VRF CEs here, we have VRF Lite running, and so we have VPN1, VPN2, and then we have the various physical interfaces assigned to those VRFs. As well as that, I've also configured the loopback interface, so this doesn't go into VRF, this is just global. And the loopback interface follows the router numbering scheme that I've established here, which is that P routers have uh, their numbers as 1x, PE, or not PE, sorry, ASBR routers, if I can draw an A, have their number starting with a 2, PE routers have their number starting with a 3, and CE routers have their number starting with a 4. So for example, ASBR1 up here, that would be 21, you know, ASBR2, that would be 22, CE1, that would be 41, as you can see down here in this loopback address. And so the loopback address is just the router number in all four octets there. And that just makes it easy for us to identify what router we're looking at when we're looking at the loopback addresses there, because loopback addresses become pretty important in the context of MPLS in general, but uh, unified MPLS as well. 
as well as that, that's pretty much it. I haven't configured much of anything else. I've can obviously configured the VRFs on the PE routers, and I've assigned interfaces to those. But besides VRFs and just basic IP addressing, that's basically all I've configured. And that's basically all we need to have configured in order to get off the ground running in the next video when we go ahead and take a look at configuring the routing processes and LDP and all of that in order to get the individual LSPs up and running. So that way we have basic MPLS reachability within the individual IGP domains that we configure, which again will map pretty closely to the IGP domains that we have in this diagram here. And then from there, we can go ahead and move on from there after we configure those writing processes into configuring the PGP label unicast, into configuring uh, all the PGP tunneling that needs to happen in order to facilitate this unified, or you might hear it called seamless MPLS architecture here. So hopefully this very quick video gave you a good idea of how this unified MPLS topology is going to be configured and the pre-configurations that we're starting off with. Again, pretty simple, just IP addressing, just so we don't have to spend a lot of time going through IP addressing that I will assume you already know how to configure if you're watching a video series on MPLS. So that's it for this video. If you liked it, go ahead and give it a like. If you want to keep posted with what I post next, go ahead and hit the subscribe button down below. Hit the notification bell so I get notified for any new videos I post. If you have any comments, feedback, suggestions, just want to say hi, say more Cisco, whatever, as long as you keep it appropriate, I just want to hear from you guys. Go ahead and post a comment down below in the comment section. I try to respond to all of them that I can. And with that, I will see you guys in the next video. Have fun. More Cisco.